All right, so welcome back here in the third lesson. Still dealing with contracts in this lesson. Um, however, in this uh, audio section here, we're going to deal with some of the terms and the formation of a contract and what makes it so special and things of that nature. So, you ready? Let's get started. So, contracts either operate in the fashion of bilateral, meaning two, as in bicycle, or unilateral, meaning only one side to act. In the real estate world and in your business as well as my business, uh, all the contracts we use are going to be bilateral, meaning both parties have an obligation and both parties have an activity to perform inside of that contract. I mean, you've got the purchase agreement, we've got the listing agreement, we've got the buyer's agency agreement. So all of those are bilateral, meaning both parties must act. I mean, if you even think about the fact that we have this thing called a mutual release. Mutual meaning two, both parties. It is possible that both parties do not agree. So in an instance of a mutual release, yes, one party may not agree to the release and therefore it's not executed. I have on several different occasions throughout my career denied a mutual release from a listing contract from a seller. I'm like, dude, you signed a contract. I've got money into this listing. I've got time. Now all of a sudden you want to pull it because your neighbor's sister's aunt's kid's brother has graduated from real estate school and you want him to have the listing? No way. So it's a mutual release, meaning both parties must agree. Now realize that in a contract, as long as the contract is sufficiently um, written so that it has all five parts that we spoke about a minute ago, you guys can do anything you want to do in the contract as long as both parties agree. All right? And we'll get to that here in a minute. But right now we're talking about a bilateral contract is one in which two parties must act as opposed to a unilateral contract. In a unilateral contract, only one party has to actually act. One of the best examples of this is uh, layaway. If you understand what layaway is, and some of the younger kids may not know what this is, you used to be able to go in and buy something on layaway and what it was was you'd put it behind the counter, you'd give them five bucks and then they would hold that for you and in the next month or so you could come back and pay the difference between the $20 and the five you put down as the option fee. They would hold and you would pay them the 15 bucks. Now here's, and that you take the shirt out of layaway and buy it, all right? That's a, a really bad example, but you get the point. In that scenario, the person that put the shirt in the layaway never really had to go back and act, all right? They never had to go back and act. But if they did go back, then the other person, i.e. the department store or whatever, had to actually act and sell them the property. That is an example of a unilateral contract where only one of the parties actually had to perform. Had to perform, that's the key. The guy that bought the shirt never had to perform meaning he never had to finish the deal. He never had to go back. He never had to take the shirt out of the way. But if he did, the department store was required to act and fulfill their side of the deal. Now, in real estate, 
we actually deal with one unilateral contract. It's called the option. The option is the right in the future to do something today. And investors use this in the form of, I will buy some real estate within the next year for this price we negotiate today, but I'm only going to give you $1,000. The person that is selling the option obviously becomes the option or, and the person that's buying it is the option E, and the money is called option consideration. And when the option E exercises the option, meaning he goes back and says, hey, I'm back, I want to exercise my option and buy this land from you, then the optionor is required to actually sell the property. So that is the only unilateral contract that we use in real estate is the option. Now there are several different types of options and we will get to them in another section. Um, but the option is the right to do something in the future based upon terms that we discuss today, okay? <clears throat> so in the formation of the contract is also this thing called the offer and the counter offer. And we talked about this already at uh, a little bit, so I want to go back and look real quick. Remember we had this thing called the offer. Maybe we did. My pen has seemed to have gone dead. There we go. So we have the offer or writing an offer to the offeree. And I told you that they can accept it, they can reject it, and then they write the counter offer, and the counter comes back to this point. Now, one of the things we didn't talk about at that point that we need to is the fact that the offeree, when he counters off back, this is a legal rejection of the original offer. Meaning that once the counter has been given back and the offer has been, the counter offer has been accepted, it is a legal rejection of this original offer. That offer is now gone and cannot be activated or exercised again, all right? So that is the offer and the counter offer. And at some point, obviously, we've got to get to the acceptance so that, uh, that they can form that. Now, inside of the counter offer or the actual offer is another term called time is of the essence. Now, time is of the essence is uh, one of my pet peeves that people tend to mess up. And all the time I hear this, well, I gave them to four o'clock to answer and time is of the essence. No, 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 no. All right. And in case you got confused in that, no. Time is of the essence deals with the actual completion of the contract. It has nothing to do with the formation of the contract, all right? Nothing to do with the formation of the contract. That is the time that you have given people to respond. I sent them an offer. They have until 5 p.m. to respond, all right? That is just the deadline to respond. Once the contract has been, okay, <clears throat> Once they've responded and said, yes, we'll take your offer, they accepted it and we got all the acceptance. In that offer is a time frame by which to complete that deal. That is time is of the essence. Time is of the essence is a uh, legal term that means a person has so much time that they have asked for to complete whatever this portion of the contract is. So when the 
buyer sends an offer to the seller and says, you have until 5 p.m. to accept. But in the contract, there's this thing that says, we will close by May the 1st or 30 days from today. That time frame is the time is of the essence time frame. That is the time frame by which once we form the contract, we have 30 days to get it completely done. All right. That's what time is of the essence. And time is of the essence means <coughs> once a person is beyond the time frame of which was agreed upon in the contract, that one party or the other is not subjected to the contract anymore. And potentially, one party or the other could be liable for a breach of contract to the extent of whatever the contract states, like loss of earnest money, to the fullest extent of the law, whatever the contract says. So get here's what I'm saying. Buyer says, I want to close, and they'll close in 30 days. Day 31, if the buyer hasn't closed, or they haven't modified the uh, contract to extend it, then technically the seller is not bound to sell this property to the buyer. Imagine this, if you will. Imagine a, an offer coming in from a buyer saying, look, we got to work on the credit a little bit, but we want to buy the house, and we're going to give you twice the amount of asking price. So the guy accepts it, and he's like, okay, well, I, the buyer says, okay, I've got to work on my credit. Give me a month or two, and let me get my credit, and then I'll pay you the uh, two times your list price. And then he says, oh, well, okay. So now three years have gone by, and the buyer says, well, you know, you're still under contract, and I'm still working on it. It's taking me a little longer. I know it's been three years, but remember, you signed that purchase agreement. Duh. This is exactly the scenario that time is of the essence is trying to eliminate. So that when the buyer says, I will close and make you whole within 30 days, and the buyer doesn't do it, the seller now is not obligated to stay in the contract because in theory, based on what I just told you, he could be under that contract for years. So you don't want that. So there's got to be a time frame by which the parties go, you know, you've had long enough. And whatever that time frame is you agreed upon is the time frame. And time is of the essence merely says after that time frame, one of us is not bound to the contract, and the other could potentially still be um, held liable. All right? All right, that's good enough for this session. Hang out. We're going to do another one uh, coming up right now.